Greetings. My name is David, uh, and if, like me, you're passionate about uh, integrating collaboration experiences into your apps and applications using Cisco uh, WebEx uh, APIs and SDKs, uh, then stick around for the next session. Uh, this will be a 20-minute uh, technical uh, deep dive into some of the brand new uh, API features that are available. Uh, we've got a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. We'll be talking today uh, about the latest and greatest WebEx API and SDK features that have been recently released. Uh, and see them in action. My name is David Stout. Uh, I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. If you have any questions about uh, anything you see in this presentation or uh, just anything uh, collaboration API related at all, uh, feel free to find me on uh, WebEx Teams uh, at dstout at cisco.com uh, or Twitter um, and let me know what you're thinking. So today uh, we'll be talking about uh, collaboration in context. Uh, so just at a high level, um, why these APIs are important and why the things that you can do uh, can help you make uh, better applications and, uh, and better workflows and uh, just make the world a better place. Um, a theme running throughout that uh, presentation will be uh, the unification of the WebEx uh, experience. Uh, so WebEx meetings, WebEx teams, WebEx calling and devices, uh, these are merging into one uh, single WebEx brand. Um, and uh, we're trying to bring the developer experience there as well. Next, we'll get into the, the details, the code, the nitty gritty, and uh, we'll see um, a pretty cool demo demonstrating how to embed uh, various kinds of WebEx uh, meeting and uh, voice and calling uh, technology into a browser-based web application uh, with uh, not too many lines of code. Um, from there, we'll dig into uh, some of the advanced uh, WebEx messaging bot features uh, that have been released, including the new adaptive cards uh, 1.2 set uh, of enhancements. Uh, and then take a look at some of the uh, um, APIs new on the radar. Uh, so the WebEx meetings REST APIs uh, and calling APIs uh, that uh, can let you extend uh, and integrate WebEx uh, even further than you thought before. So uh, collaboration and context, uh, what exactly does that mean? Uh, well, it's basically the idea that um, the WebEx itself uh, as a set of tools, as a platform, uh, clients that you can carry around uh, with you and access from any device, uh, they're great. Uh, I use them every day for uh, meetings uh, continuously to work with colleagues, to work with customers, uh, uh, outside developers, uh, even family and friends. Um, and, uh, you know, in and of themselves, uh, they're great products that, uh, that people would uh, use continuously anyway. Um, but the ability to uh, embed that great collaboration functionality, uh, whether it would be screen sharing, uh, sending files back and forth, uh, voice, video collaboration, uh, you know, large scale meetings, uh, training or support uh, sessions, uh, being able to include that capability uh, into your own applications, uh, into the, directly into the user interface or integrated on the back end uh, is a really powerful concept uh, that I think makes both of those things uh, even more uh, important uh, and uh, interesting, exciting, uh, and valuable to, uh, to customers uh, and their developers. Uh, so the WebEx Education Connector uh, is a great example of this. Um, this is actually a free component that you can go uh, and download uh, and configure uh, today uh, for your WebEx organization uh, if you have an LMS system uh, to test with or are, or, are, or already in place. Um, but the idea is that uh, meetings, uh, WebEx messaging chat, uh, file sharing capabilities, uh, messaging, uh, these are embedded into the user interface of uh, the various LMS systems that have been uh, integrated with this connector. Uh, so that uh, staff, students, faculty uh, can collaborate online, uh, you know, in a big video uh, conference uh, session uh, that's, a, that's a classroom uh, that can be recorded and accessed later through the UI, uh, or just one-on-one -on -one chats, uh, questions between students or uh, with a professor um, in, a, in an office hour situation. So let's dig into this uh, and see some of these features and functionality uh, in action. Um, we have uh, a WebEx collaboration sample app uh, that I'm going to show to you today. Um, it uses the WebEx SDK for browsers. Uh, this is a, a free and actually completely open source SDK, uh, one of several, uh, that is available for uh, embedding WebEx functionality uh, into uh, web browsers. Uh, you can also use it in, on the back end uh, for Node.js. Um, but the open source uh, components are, uh, are fully available on GitHub. 
um, and uh, you can incorporate those uh, to use um, you know, voice, video, meeting functionality, messaging. Uh, most of the features and functionality of WebEx uh, are available today. Uh, so this sample uh, is also open source. Um, all the, the link is available uh, in the, the presentation. Uh, you can go try it out today. Um, but includes uh, a couple of things. Uh, it's, it's essentially a, a web-based application that uh, embeds some voice and video, um, but it also demonstrates some other uh, cool things that uh, I uh, was working on at the time. Uh, one is the uh, Cisco um, Momentum UI uh, design uh, assets. Uh, so this essentially is an open sourcing of the design elements, the CSS, uh, the React components, uh, all the things that make up the user interface of a um, you know WebEx uh, branded uh, uh, application. Uh, those developer resources uh, are open source on GitHub, uh, so you can actually go and download uh, and reference and use uh, the same icons, the same CSS and layout that we use in our applications uh, to build a uh, you know a consistent look and feel, uh, which I thought was cool. Uh, so this application demonstrates how to use those UI components and uh, uh, pack them up. Uh, it uses a web pack uh, to um, uh, put together all of the uh, the SDK, SDK components uh, and the Momentum UI components, uh, as well as the CSS and, and JavaScript of the app um, to uh, essentially make a single page web app that that does what it does. Uh, so let's let's uh, take a look. Uh, this is a Visual Studio Code project. Um, it's actually interesting uh, because it uh, uses uh, some of the advanced features of, uh, of uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, like tasks, uh, launches, background tasks, uh, so that you can actually uh, launch the application uh, in VS Code, uh, spawn uh, a lightweight uh, web server, um, and then uh, run and actually debug interactively the code uh, in Google Chrome. Uh, so it attaches dynamically and launches the browser uh, to take you to the user interface. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, there's a few uh, components styled with uh, what should be recognizable, you know, uh, blue blue round buttons and, and so forth. Um, and uh, there's some ongoing work to, to add some more elements uh, like this hang up button. Um, but the idea is that uh, you can uh, connect to the uh, uh, WebEx authentication service, uh, an SSO, uh, and then register uh, essentially a, a soft phone device uh, embedded into the browser. Um, so this code is um, maybe 300 lines or so. Uh, a lot of it has to do with driving the user interface, um, but uh, there is some code uh, demonstrated in here for most of the basic features, uh, making a voice and video call. Uh, I mean, it all starts from uh, importing the SDK and uh, initializing it, um, but let's give it a kick here. Um, we grabbed the uh, access token uh, from the developer documentation on uh, developer.webex.com. Uh, we, when we click on connect, uh, essentially we take that uh, Webex component and we do an init function on it. Uh, we give it our access token so that it can authorize uh, with the Webex cloud. Um, and from there, uh, we add a couple of events. Uh, so when we get a new meeting, for example, an incoming call, um, uh, we want to have uh, some functionality going on and then uh, we register. Uh, so we're going to register a soft phone uh, video phone device. Um, and uh, that shows the code here. Uh, it's not, not terribly difficult. Uh, we can actually sync uh, the con configured and scheduled meetings that we have for this user. Uh, we set up the user interface uh, and go from there. Once we're connected, we have a choice of a number of different ways that we can make uh, a call uh, or join a meeting. Uh, the simple way is uh, just uh, via the WebEx uh, user's ID. Uh, so if we uh, click on dial, uh, we'll launch a one-to-one -one, uh, voice and video call that will be embedded uh, you know, in this uh, area that we've uh, designated in the user interface. Uh, but we can also uh, retrieve and, and do a call based on the user ID. Uh, we can actually use WebEx Teams um, messaging APIs to create a test uh, space in the WebEx uh, messaging API, uh, create a new room. Uh, for example, uh, we should see that that room has now just been created and uh, we can join that room with whoever else may be in there for an ad hoc uh, voice video meeting, or we can actually use the new WebEx uh, meetings REST APIs. Uh, here, uh, we're going to create a test meeting 
with a start date, uh, end time, uh, a title, a password. Um, you know, we enable, disable some recordings. So lots of the familiar settings uh, from the WebEx meetings uh, user interface are available with the API. Uh, we make a REST request uh, with POST uh, to this location, um, and we can actually grab the web, the web link, so the URL for that meeting uh, that you're probably familiar with from WebEx. Uh, populate that into the uh, user interface. Um, and then when we uh, click on dial, we do a meeting.join, uh, get the supported uh, voice and video devices, uh, configure what kind of media streams we want to have, uh, including voice, video, uh, file sharing or screen sharing uh, can be enabled uh, as well. Uh, add the media to the meeting and uh, we should at that point be uh, in a pretty good place to go. So we can see that the, the local side is uh, starting to connect media. Essentially, all it takes to get the media displayed is to uh, take the media stream uh, that uh, comes in in this uh, media ready event and attach it to the, the, the view. To, so the div that we have set aside uh, for the media streaming, uh, we connect those two objects up together and uh, we're in the meeting. So I'm the only one here for now, um, but I can take this URL, uh, go over to my regular web browser uh, or just view uh, the uh, set of meetings that uh, I have scheduled for myself. Uh, see the updated new meeting. Uh, let's go ahead and sign in uh, and join just like I, I regularly would. The UI, the soft phone uh, capability has the ability to uh, you know, mute other users to start and stop recording. Uh, so it's a pretty um, uh, full featured uh, first class citizen, uh, which means that you can uh, not only do one to one uh, uh, WebEx uh, teams calling, but you can do um, WebEx uh, meetings, cloud uh, scheduled calling, ad hoc calling, um, and you can even use the new uh, WebEx calling um, uh, Broadsoft uh, PBX functionality that's available. Uh, so I can you know, start this meeting from this browser, any other browser, uh, and uh, once I get in, I can see that, the, that there's multiple participants and everyone's in the call together. So I can switch back and forth uh, and see that uh, I only have one video camera, so I don't get two vid uh, video streams, but Anyway, uh, I thought that was a pretty cool example of uh, how you can use uh, all kinds of uh, WebEx uh, collaboration and meeting functionality uh, in a browser. Next, we'll take uh, a look at some of the new enhanced uh, and advanced features for WebEx messaging bots. Um, bots has been uh, a feature uh, for WebEx messaging uh, that developers have, uh, have taken to uh, for a while now. Um, adaptive cards uh, functionality was actually released uh, a while back. Um, but it's basically the ability to uh, not only uh, uh, embed, uh, you know, text messages back and forth with bots, um, but actually to create a composable, uh, graphical, uh, interactive uh, uh, user interface, uh, a form uh, that you can display uh, directly inside the chat, uh, inside the WebEx Teams client that users can interact with, enter data in and submit. Um, that provides a real nice way to provide some uh, advanced uh, interactive functionality uh, based on your application inside our application. So uh, you've always been able to make uh, really nice uh, layouts uh, and text uh, and, and input capabilities uh, with adaptive cards on uh, WebEx Teams. Um, the new 1.2 spec uh, adds even more uh, capabilities. Uh, so you can do uh, background images, uh, rich text uh, in, uh, areas, uh, a whole lot more uh, features for uh, adding uh, actions and various uh, uh, capabilities. Um, and the result is <laughs> this is extremely ugly uh, sample card that has a background image and some of the other features. Um, but the idea is that uh, you can make um, you know, nice user interfaces where users can interact with applications uh, directly in the collaboration experience. Uh, so, uh, you know, like we saw embedding uh, our collaboration experience into your web application previously, this is the flip side. So you can embed some of your application uh, UI and experience uh, inside the WebEx application. Also new uh, is the Adaptive Cards Designer. Uh, and let's actually take a look at that. Uh, so the Adaptive Cards Designer is, uh, it's a tool that uh, is provided by uh, AdaptiveCards.io. Uh, but it's a graphical user interface uh, that allows you to uh, design these cards. 
Uh, so you ha uh, can drag and drop components uh, onto the uh, um, a card. Uh, take a look at a uh, you know a preview of what it's going to look like. Uh, change properties, right? So if I want to set a background uh, on the adaptive card, uh, let's see, background image. Uh, let's grab this uh, cloud one that I have hanging around. So you can uh, uh, author the card, um, or at least most of it, uh, here in the, the GUI. Uh, take a look at the uh, output of the JSON uh, that can get fairly involved depending on how many elements you have and layout components. Uh, you can just grab uh, the JSON itself, uh, paste that into your code, um, uh, enter in the variables where you want something dynamic to happen, and it makes it uh, a whole lot easier than uh, trying to author this adaptive card JSON uh, on your own. So last, uh, and probably not least, uh, I think both these topics uh, deserve uh, sessions on their own, to be honest, um, but we have some brand new APIs, um, adding new uh, capabilities, functionality to your developer toolbox. The first is uh, the WebEx REST meeting APIs. Uh, so if you've been a WebEx developer uh, for a while, uh, you may be aware uh, that there are some uh, other AP pre-existing APIs uh, based on XML and HTTP that have been around for uh, a long, long time. Uh, but these uh, have a much different developer experience. Uh, they're based on XML and XSD. Um, they uh, don't have very good doc documentation, to be honest. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit difficult to use these, especially in concert with some of the other uh, new modern uh, uh, APIs and SDKs. Uh, so uh, there's been an effort to uh, port uh, some of those uh, capabilities to the uh, new RESTful uh, uh, API uh, framework. Uh, so you can now use the same uh, interactive documentation, the same tools, the same sample code uh, to use these meeting APIs to build your applications with. Capabilities are uh, similar. Uh, so you can uh, do uh, scheduling of meetings. You can uh, add and remove invitees, uh, set your meeting preferences, uh, retrieve and delete recordings, all the kinds of things that an end user can do in the WebEx uh, you know, uh, user interface for uh, managing their meetings, uh, and so forth. In addition uh, to that, uh, the WebEx REST calling APIs were uh, just recently uh, launched. Um, but this uh, is a set of uh, APIs uh, that drive the uh, new WebEx calling uh, platform. Uh, so this is a, a complete enterprise PBX uh, that lives in the cloud uh, with Cisco uh, uh, phones uh, on your desks, uh, registered to uh, the, the cloud that Cisco manages and maintains. Um, but uh, it's been a great service for uh, sort of no-touch uh, enterprise uh, calling functionality. Um, but this uh, set of APIs uh, provides uh, uh, not only call control, uh, but as well uh, some management uh, and uh, administration capabilities. Uh, so you'll uh, be able to, to uh, do all kinds of call operations uh, on your uh, WebEx calling endpoints. Uh, so you can do click to call applications, make dials, uh, you know, do things uh, like transfer, park, resume, hang, hold up, conference, uh, all those things uh, that you can do by touching the phone, you can do uh, programmatically uh, with a, a, a robust uh, third-party call control API, uh, including uh, things like uh, call history. Uh, which are uh, uh, difficult to, even uh, on our unified communications uh, platforms. In addition to the call control, uh, there's a, a set of uh, management uh, and admin APIs as well. Uh, so you can manage uh, user licenses, uh, add locations, uh, add uh, WebEx calling users and extensions and phones, uh, and uh, otherwise integrate and automate all those kind of moves, adds and changes uh, uh, things uh, via APIs. Uh, that normally would take a dedicated admin sitting uh, clicking buttons all day. So that's it. All we had time for today. Uh, there's always more. Uh, new APIs and features uh, come out uh, constantly uh, for WebEx. Uh, so follow us at developer.webex.com uh, and developer.cisco.com to uh, learn the latest and greatest uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, I'm always fascinated to find out uh, what our developers build uh, with our APIs. Uh, it's usually quite amazing. Uh, so keep in touch. Um, but until next time, take care.